Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Eric. And I'm Alex. HD downlinks. Yeah. I know nothing about them, but you guys I, are the man. There's not many of them. Yeah, DJI Lightbridge was the first one to really bring it to um, a situation where it was accessible. Yes. And they do exist, um, but for the first time they're getting popular on the hobby market. Yeah, the them. Paralynx Aero and the Teradek were the first, I guess, real HD downlinks that you could get in a professional situation. Um, but DJI kind of brought it to the hobby. Gotcha. Now there's some down points about DJI Lightbridge, and that's uh, 2.4, correct? Yeah, it's there's a tiny bit of latency to it. It's not much, and in most yeah. cases you're okay. Um, the only time I've noticed flying with the Inspire's light bridge is if I get really close to something um, proximity wise, I yeah. can notice that that can be an issue. It's but kind of other than that, it's not bad. We actually just did a, a quick little makeshift latency test uh, just yeah. a couple seconds ago with the DJI Inspire, which is on light bridge, uh, QAV 400, which I'm running 5.8 with a board camera. Yep. And then the new, this is the new Kinex. Yes. And the Connects is sold by uh, GetFPV, and it is, what, what's the price range on that? I think uh, about 1600 bucks. 1600 which bucks. Which is so. a, a pretty penny for an HD downlink. Yeah. Uh, but there are some benefits to HD downlink too. Yeah. Uh, what we have in the back here is we have a monstrous TV. Now, if you had an SD downlink and you're putting it on TV this side, you would definitely notice the quality. Oh, the pixelation would be terrible. It would be like taking a JPEG and just pulling and it up real big and just get really ugly. The diversity is pretty darn impressive. You got five antennas on the receiver, and you also have two antennas here that uh, they're very particular about how you orientate it uh, to make sure that it spreads out properly. What I'm using right now is this is the, the new face hugger landing gear that we're doing. Uh, Peter actually applied these, so they're almost at a 90 degree angle. And you want to do that just like your receiver rules. Same rules apply here. You want full diversity to spread that signal around as much as possible. Now, one of the nice things is is, uh, generally when you think in HD and all this new technology is mm -hmm. complicated this is completely plug and play yeah in fact you guys we were able to get this thing together at the field yeah so in it's... Austin uh, this is what pre-production Austin yeah mm -hmm. and uh, there's no instructions for it and you figured it out really quick yeah it's pretty easy pretty darn easy so everything's plug and play it also has a very wide range on cells you can go from three cell I believe to six cell yeah which gives you a wide power uh, band we have actually two separate batteries but I can wire this right into my four cell system and power this right off a distribution board yep. which I think is exceptional yeah that's pretty cool one thing I want to point out here is uh, we currently do not have a gimbal set up on this it's because the gimbals we currently have all mount on the inside mm -hmm. and unfortunately with the way this is you need that little bit of space you need a, a setup that the the gimbal mounts just like this so you have this external space here to mount that yeah and so this is why it's hard fixed on here uh, but they do have this very lightweight cord that will hopefully not restrict that if you have any outside forces on the gimbal it usually doesn't play very nice with yeah, it yeah so. and that ribbon cable i do believe is separate it didn't come with it i think get fpv made that specifically for nice. gimbal use um so i don't think that actually comes with the kit for 1600. yeah very good to know well i've been delaying this because frankly I, i've tightened all my bolts but now <laughs> you lose his lock tight? we're, we're, we're oh, I forgot about that but we, we <laughs> We've had a really good luck. We've, we've flown this with one motor failed and everything, but now we're carrying uh, a sixteen hundred dollar downlink. System. <laughs> Eric, I wish this was flying on one of your machines. Well, you know, we're uh, we're still working on some of those prototypes, yeah. so those will be coming. Keep into uh, uh, stay tuned for a lot of really great designs with AP ships from Eric that are comparable to the Inspire. A lot of yeah. really good things. This does phenomenal. I can't wait to see what you come out with. It's it's going to be pretty cool. All right, enough delay. Let's put it in the air. Let's do it. We got a beautiful uh, RV that's going to be taxing up down for subject matter. So uh, let's go ahead and take this off and uh, chase after it. Okay, we're ready. How's it flying, Josh? Good, really good. Austin, how long is your runway? Uh, 2,600 feet. All right, so this runway is 2,600 feet, and we're flying from end to end chasing uh, Austin's dad's beautiful airplane. So one really cool Fire. thing is we're really putting this through the test with having a noisy environment. What I mean by that is we have lots of other FPV signals going on at the same time. We got uh, Eric flying the, uh, the HD downlink from the Inspire. We have Alex flying his uh, 5.8 uh, immersion system, and then I'm flying the Connect system. And we're having really good luck with signal. And this runway is about 2,600 feet long, and we're going end to end, and it's very solid. Are you guys cool with him taxiing down there and then taking off? Yeah. Josh, where are you at? Do you need to, tag, to take off from the other end? Doesn't make any difference to either one you want. Okay, let me get out of the way for you. All right, let us get out of the way here. Stand by. Here we go. That is gorgeous. 
<laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do, hey Austin, can you let them know I'm gonna station over by our uh, by the barn? Yeah, everybody go over to the barn now. For all you guys wondering, we have like radio communication, radio communication going on, and all the pots are well, well briefed for what's going on. So this is this is a, a very do not try at all type thing. No, it definitely. Could be, it could be trouble. Also, a private airport. Yeah, private closed airport. <laughs> that's air to air. Oh man, that's incredible. I'll tell you what, it's a little bit bumpy. We got some thermals, it's high noon. I'm in loiter mode, hands off, and you can see how minimal the movement is uh, with this. If this had a gimbal on it, you'd virtually not know you're even moving. There's drums everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Nice one, thanks, Dad. Okay, I'll be back in shortly. Hey, I'm gonna have to land. I think I'm out of juice. Now, the Vector has a really great system with, uh, with fail safes and everything, but what we did is we turned all that off and we're not patching through any of that. All right, so we're gonna bring this in here. turned off. Nice. All right, so three went up and three came down on one piece. Actually, Indeed. four. Four went up. Yeah. That's right. there, was a, there was something a little bit bigger that was piloted in uh, first person view. And just so everybody knows, we did have radio communication with the pilot and we're at a private field. Yes, yep, so. with, with full permission. Yeah. Um, and by the way, if anyone ever wants to do stuff, communication, 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 and yep. spotters, uh, which we have plenty of. Um, I feel like I owe an apology on two different fronts. I am not an AP pilot. And uh, these two guys are, and they understand composition and things like that. Uh, I'm just happy my machine held together. I think you I did great, man. Screws. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, I think a gimbal on this, too, would be incredible. We're going to turn you into an AP guy yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. The thing I love the most about was whenever you're controlling a machine, you can honestly feel the lag sometimes. Mm -hmm. You give an input, and then you see it. And it's a really concerning, uncomfortable thing. Yeah. I didn't feel any of that. And when we're going up and down a 2,600-foot runway, uh, the only time I had static, and, and when we call it static, it's actually pixelation. It's artifacts, they call it. It yeah. al almost looks like Tetris, mm -hmm. you know, kind of overlaying it. Uh, but that was only when I was shooting through about four to five different rows of trees. This goes back to the fact that this is not something that you're going to be using for uh, for quad racing and things like that. This no. is an AP ship. And yeah, I'd say AP, or if there is somebody out there who has the money and just wants a completely immersive experience, yeah. uh, wants to go up and see their house in HD from the air yes. and feel like a bird. This is definitely it. That'll be it. Um, other than that, yeah, AP, and that's perfect for that kind of it's application. Keep in mind, the more you have invested, the more resilient you want to be about yep. checking your machine, something I don't do very well, and also RF meters, things like that. Check out your environment, your noise meters. Yep. It's a very exciting time for FPV. It is. All right, friends, thank you for watching. Um, let's see, Get FPV. It yeah. distributes this, right? Yeah, this yeah. Is, they're the only ones, I believe, and they actually helped uh, bring this technology to the hobby market, I think. So cool. GetFPV.com, it's 1600 bucks. Uh, pretty little cool piece of equipment. Yeah, yep. indeed. Not going to be for everybody, but the people that are going to be able to need it are going to love it. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. See we'll see you next time. See you next time.